everybody here we are in October and unfortunately that means the end of gardening season up here it still is a great time for planting so if you've got any perennials or shrubs that you need to get into the ground now is a great time to get them established also if you're up in the um, northern regions it's also a great time to consider planting your bulbs for next year if you've got any daffodils tulips hyacinths those types of things it's nice because a couple of years ago for my birthday, my mom asked what I wanted and I told her, oh, I want bulbs. So we planted them in the ground the first week of November and we've had beauty for a couple of years now with them. So fall is a great time for planting, but that also means it's time for cleanup. So we're gonna go through the gardens today and we're gonna start our cleanup process. And it'll take us probably about seven to 10 days out here, but the weather has been, um, cold for we had two hard frosts so far and all of our cold sensitive material has just bit the dust um, it frosted right off and and it's now time for cleanup we are going to show you a few um, highlights of plants that have just rocked the gardens all season long and are still looking fantastic to this day and i hate to rip them out but it's time for everything to get cleaned up so we're going to go through all of our beds we're going to get all the plant material taken out we're going to get all of our containers picked up for the season. We're going to empty our soil into the beds um, so that we can recycle it for next season and then put everything away to get sanitized. So we'll be out here about seven, about a week or so just to get all the plant material cleaned up. And then we'll be about another week to get everything sanitized and put away. And then that's the end of our garden season um, and on to our planning for next year. So it's always great in December when there's snow on the ground to start thinking about that spring garden and, and planning what we want to do for next season. But we will also means we'll be able to transition into the greenhouses and show you everything that we do and how we take a plant from just getting started all the way out to this final product out here is where you get to enjoy it in the garden. So we're going to show you all of the process, processes that we do to start our seeds, to start our cuttings, how we sanitize the greenhouses, get them ready the machinery that we use to create our little plant factory out here and just introduce you to, to our world and stuff that I really love. So come along for the journey today. This is it. Today is the cleanup in the gardens. We've hit a few areas and now we are going through to take care of the rest of everything. But we've had a very, very good season up here. And this morning, we're just going to give you a few highlights of the last plants that are looking fantastic out here in the gardens. So here we are with Begonia surefire rose. You might remember these from the hydrangea video that we shot a few weeks ago, but in the front here is uh, Begonia surefire rose. As you walk around this pergola a little bit where it's been a little bit more exposed, we've definitely had some frost damage, but on this side, it's been a little bit warmer and they are still rocking and rolling here in October, which is quite surprising for a begonia. These have a really, really huge flower on them Go ahead and whoops grab another one here so you can see the size there these were planted back in the last week of may and here we are in october so we've had a very long season of performance for these this is a large flowered begonia these have a good height in the garden up here we've gotten up about oh about 15 inches or so but in warmer areas you can get up around 18 to 24 inches and um, in one of our other videos where we sh showed surefire red, if you make sure that you give them plenty of water and plenty of feed, they can actually get up a little bit taller too. That was quite the surprise this year. But we have two colors available, the surefire red and the surefire rose. 
It's just a great begonia to put into the landscape to have a nice presence. Um, space these out about 12 to 15 inches apart. And the great thing about these is they'll take both the sun and a shade location. So you don't have to worry about what your light levels are. Just go ahead and plant them and enjoy them. Here we are in our um, transitional summer to fall bed that we shot, oh, maybe a month or six weeks ago. And this right here is Penicetum rubrum. This is also known as red fountain grass. This is really making a statement out here in this fall garden. This grass is an annual grass. Um, it'll be perennial if you're down in the warmer regions, um, 9 and 10 maybe borderline on eight, but uh, definitely an annual grass up here in New England. Uh, we're up about three and a half feet tall. In some other areas, you can probably get another foot of height on these, but this is a great plant for the garden. I love adding grasses to the landscape as it adds nice texture, all season color, and it adds movement in the wind. You can see we have it bordered here with um, a perennial heuchera. This is, um, mahogany monster and just look at the coloration with all these beautiful fall leaves one of the best parts of of new england i'm a florida girl and been up here i think 12 years now and it's just something magical about the seasons changing and looking at all these different colors but grasses are a great plant to add into your landscapes and this one is red fountain grass here we are with Salvia Rock and Play in the Blues. We showed this in a video earlier this season, our red, white, and blue garden. And this is a wonderful plant to add to any garden. We get a nice height in the garden, a nice presence for it. We get this nice true blue color on it, which is really hard to find in the horticulture world. We have a lot of plants that we call blue, but it's really hard to find a nice true blue color on these. This is a great pollinator plant, especially for the bees. And the beautiful thing about this is it is very low maintenance. It'll take full sun, it'll take heat, it'll take um, sunny locations. So it'll fit in almost any garden. The beautiful thing about this is when it starts flowering, for us in the spring, you start out with the little flowers like this, and then they just keep expanding. So you get your longer inflorescence coming up. And then by the end of the season, you get it all the way up to here. So even though we've lost the little individual flowers, we still have all these nice bracts that are adding some color and some texture out here in the garden. So this has probably been blooming since June, and here we are in October. So a very long season of performance for these. We've gone through two weekends of really hard frost out here and they're still looking fantastic. We've removed the landscape, um, excuse me, the lantana that was in the landscape in some of our other border plants, but this is just still rocking and rolling. So if you have not tried this one, go ahead and um, find a place for it in your gardens next season. So as you can see, the weather has definitely affected our perennials out here in the garden, our perennial hibiscus, as well as our perennial um, panicums. We did a video a few weeks ago, and we'll put the link down below that talks about our fall cleanup tips. We're going to be leaving these as they are until next spring, just so that with the grasses, we can add a little bit of winter interest in the garden, as well as provide a habitat for our critters and our native bees and our native insects. So if you're looking for some tips and tricks on how to clean up your perennials at the end of the season, or not to clean them up but and wait till spring, go ahead and check out that link. But it's definitely fall and getting close to winter up here. The genus on this is Lobularia, and a lot of you will know this as sweet alyssum, but this is sweet alyssum on steroids. So this is a vegetative alyssum, and the beautiful thing about this is that it doesn't go to seed and spread everywhere in the garden. The other thing is because it doesn't set seed, it puts all of its energy into building a huge, robust plant and flowering all season long. So we're probably in our fourth to fifth month of performance here. It's still looking beautiful. We are going to be cleaning this up today, but we had a friend plant these in her garden and she actually had it through Thanksgiving. It actually got frosted on it and then came right back once the 
ice melted off of it. So this is a very hardy plant. It works really good for your early spring gardens as well as your late fall gardens because of that weather tolerance. And then don't discount the heat performance that it will take in the summertime. Moonlight Night is a, it's hard to tell here, it looks more white, but it's a really soft yellow chiffon color. And the other colors in the series that it matches up with are White Night, which is a pure white, and Dark Night, which is a nice rich purple color. So those are the three plants. They make this beautiful globe shape for planters, and they work very well in the landscape. The other added benefit about this is that it is a pollinator plant. It's not going to attract your, your honeybees, but it does support the native bees and the little tiny insects. So just because you're not seeing all the flashy pollinators out there, go ahead and make sure that you still provide plants that um, provide nectar for those other insects as well to support a balanced habitat. But this is Moonlight Night and it's really showing its performance right now. Another sneak peek for spring 2021. This is begonia, double up white, and it has this nice double flower on it, right here. So cute and dainty, but yet this is a tough as nails plant, and it looks beautiful against that chocolate leaf. Pick it up, a little too much, but oh well. <laughs> there you can see the nice contrast. This is gonna be shorter than the surefire rose that we talked about earlier in the video. Um, in general, most garden heights are going to get up about 12 to 15 inches, but if you have an extended season of performance, as you see in this container, especially where we've kept the moisture um, even and consistent to it, you're going to get up closer to 18 inches. This is another begonia that will transition very well from sunny locations to shady locations. So no matter what your light levels are, you can definitely find a spot for this in the garden. There are uh, three colors in this new series that we're introducing for spring 2021. Um, there is double up red and then double up white. Both of those have the chocolate foliage. And then double up pink is gonna have your green foliage. But all of them are going to have these nice small uh, double flowers on them and just flower over the entire plant. One of the great benefits of this plant is that it's no cleaning or no deadheading required. That means when the flowers die, you don't need to go and pick them off. The flowers are just gonna naturally fall off with the weather down into the plant, and then the vigor of the plant is gonna put new growth on top of it and keep sending up new flowers constantly throughout the season. So all you see is this nice flush of flowers on the top here. Um, we had a friend refer to this as um, the popcorn begonia because it looked like curls of corn popping. Thought it was a cute nickname, but anyway, go ahead and um, Give this one a try next year, and with the white color, it would work really good with a moon garden. We did a video a couple of weeks ago, and at the end, I told you guys that I was going to be planting a garden at my house. So we're going to give you a little insight into what my garden looks like. We had requests to share it, and you asked, and here we are with it. So last weekend, I took some plants home of um, color choice shrubs, as well as um, proven winners perennials. We were finishing up some trials in the fields and it was like a kid in a candy store. I got to go through and pick what I wanted. Loaded up my husband's truck, took them home. He was nice enough to get the area all prepped for me. We laid everything out and then we planted it and we'll show you what that looks like. And then funny story at the very end. So the concept I'll say is when you're making um, leftover night, you take everything out of the fridge that you got leftover and you eat what you want and then you sometimes have a few left. Well, I was like, ah, and we're fine. It's the end of the season. I'll just take these back to work or whatever. He's like, no, you can't throw any plants out. We have to find him a home. So we ended up planting a second garden at the house that same weekend. But it's nice to see that they're enjoying the plant material as much as I am. So we're just going to give you a little sneak peek into my world and um, introduce you to my husband and my daughter, as well as my son, and one of the little areas that we did. It was back by our basement door, which is kind of a neglected area. It had the trash cans and whatnot. We cleaned it all out. We put in some nice blocks, planted the plants, and then put a layer of mulch down. And all of them are shrubs and perennials. So we're looking forward to the beauty that those will bring to that area as well as the low maintenance for years to come. Hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do. It's so sad, it's the end of the season.